Everybody was born by a certain man and a certain woman, and every one of us came from a certain soil or ground. So then we all owe the soil, and then we owe that man or that woman. What we owe the soil is to enrich the soil, and what we owe that man and that woman is to honor them. So Rosamond and I, found it expedient as God gave us grace that it was important that we remember the ground from which we came and then the man and the woman who were the conduit through which God brought us into the world. The first time I visited the mountain Don was in June 1986. I looked around the whole environment, um, didn't look familiar, was quite unfriendly, dry. So. The concept of Giviat Ha Elohim. Giviat Ha Elohim is situated on the farm land of my late father, Patia Koluk Nab. My dad used to farm on this land. And we took that piece of land, acquired other lands around it, compensated the farmers, and then we just said, let's bet Giviat Ha. Elohim. The property is made of mainly two things. Number one is the auditorium called the Nab Nam Tent. The Nab Nam Tent is named after my father, Nab, and then my mother, Nam Bisori. So Nab Nam Tent. It will serve as an auditorium for the people of Damal Tindong and beyond where when the people want a place where they can converge, where they can meet, they can all go there and they can meet. And then maybe the district assembly, the regional coordinating office, Ghana police service, maybe they want to go there and have a kind of a retreat. And then we have the baptistry, where we will be baptizing people who give their life to Christ, and then they have that experience. And then we have the Beatrice Wells, which are the syndicate rooms for lectures and Things like that, named after Mama Rosemont's mother, Beatrice Mensah. Other facilities at the Gibeah Elohim are two gazebos, a Dulum 1 and a Dulum 2. a residential facility, Nanas Topos, a miniature farm, Nagpu, and an outdoor event center, a Windor Gardens. The library is also coming which is going to be the Emo Mensa Library, named after Mama Rosemont's dad, a very powerful man who gave us such a precious gift in the person of his daughter. We built Desert Pastures International School, Child Destiny School in the church, and is involved in all the empowerment of the women and the children, and so on and so forth. So we thought it necessary to name the library after her father. I'm particularly very excited about the idea of a library that is going to take about a hundred children at a time. It will serve as a hub where children can come together and um, share ideas, learn, do research, um, expand their 
uh, vocabulary, they will be able to learn critical thinking, enhance overall student communication skills. Over the years, I have encountered many great intellectuals who have hailed from the Nabdam district. And so I believe that it is one community that has a lot of children with very high IQ. Heal of God in the Hebrew is the Giviat Ha Elohim. The Spirit of God will come upon you when you get to the heel of God and you'll be turned into another man. So the inspiration behind the whole of the Giviat Ha Elohim is transformation. I speak with lots of mixed feelings because I look back and I see a land that once upon a time there was nothing to show for it. It was bare, it was dry. But today I see a whole city, Giviat Ha Elohim, come out of that same place. The whole purpose of the property, the whole project, we are looking at um, empowerment, where people can come for retreat, they can come for prayer, they can come for meditation, they can come for preaching. Huh? and prophecy that will change their lives and transform them then educational purposes the lectures people give there and then the library and then we are looking at enlightenment where the gospel of jesus christ floods the entire place and they get to know jesus and they are saved we are looking at um, entrenchment where the spirit of god as we pray and we use that place as a stronghold of retreat and believing God that the powers of darkness will give way to the power of light. So we are just believing God that the entire district and land will be transformed, businesses will flourish, skills will be imparted to people and then of course godly entertainment where we are going to have praise and worship and then all kinds of drama and then things that young people would do that will entertain them and that will give them life and of course you and I cannot forget that when such a place is formed employment will be made available this is my little way and this is Rosemont's little way of saying thank you to the land of Damalton Don and the people who helped us through our lives as we grew up and then this is a way of telling the rest of the family that we are thankful to God for our dads and our moms Glory of our Lord. Then 
And it pleased the king, yea, that the walls of Jerusalem should be built to the glory of our Lord. Then came Zambalat, then came Tobiah, who just hated the work of the Lord. But brethren, my prayer is none of us here present will be some lads in the house of the Lord. But Nehemiah stood up, Nehemiah stood up, yeah, in the power, in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Nehemiah stood up, Nehemiah stood up, yeah, in the power, in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines. And it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery, and a tabret, and a pipe, and a harp before them. And they shall prophesy, and the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. And thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. to get what he had and I said man the brains you claim to have used were given to you by God you did not create those brains so if you use those brains to get whatever you have it is the giver of the brains who should be glorified go ahead somebody thank him in the name of Jesus we have gone about our duties and we have come back into his presence thank him somebody go ahead and thank him we bless your name Lord we give you praise in Jesus' name, somebody shout an amen. In Ecclesiastes, the chapter number 3, the verse 4, I just want us to, I just want to draw attention to something brief here and we'll pray our last prayer in the next two minutes. He said, a time to weep. Now he was talking about the various times and seasons. And he said, there is a time to weep and a time to laugh. Somebody say, a time to laugh. Then he goes ahead to say, there is a time to mourn and a time to dance. Somebody say, a time to dance. How many of us remember Dafta? How many of you remember Dafta? This is Dafta right here. He said, there is a time to weep and there is a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. Therefore, if you have ever wept, then your time for laughing has come. If you have ever mourned, your time for dancing has come according to the prophetic word from the mouth of our Father under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. If you believe it, shout aloud, Amen. And you want to begin to declare it in the next two minutes? Begin to declare it in the name of Jesus that my time for dancing has come. That my time for laughter has come. That my time to receive peace has come. My time to receive joy has come.
declare it somebody in the name of Jesus declare it upon yourself if you remember a time you went through difficulty a time you went through challenges declare it that as you went through that now is your time to laugh now is your time to dance now is your time to have peace now is your time to have joy in the name of Jesus somebody pray make the declaration in the name of Jesus declare it we declare it upon our lives we declare it upon our businesses upon our ministries in the name of Jesus we receive it in the name of Jesus we receive our time of peace we receive our time of joy we receive our time of singing we receive our time of dancing we receive the blessing of laughter in the name of Jesus for all the troubles we have faced we receive a double in laughter we receive a double in dancing we receive the blessing of the Lord in the name of Jesus we receive it for our churches we receive it upon this ministry we receive it upon our lives in the name of Jesus we thank you eternal father we give you praise we give you glory in Jesus name somebody put your hands together as we receive agape Hallelujah, somebody. We are still in the mood of thanksgiving. Amen. We just want to thank God for Amen. the marathon of Bethesda week that we had. The Lord has been good. He showed himself. He gave us miracles. He taught us his word. And tonight we are here to say thank you for all the great things you did for us. We are here to say thank you. Yet 
Umaya kawasi Yeta wasi 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 Hey! 
Only a no ye. Only a no ye. Yami tumfo. Only a no ye. Yami tumfo. Only a no ye. Only a no ye. Only a no ye. Yami tumfo. Only a no ye. Yami tumfo. Only a netty. Only a netty no ye. Only a netty. Only a your voice and thank God. I want you to thank God for a successful Bethesda. This is your worship tonight. This is your thanksgiving tonight. You are thanking God for a successful Bethesda. Somebody lift your voice and appreciate him. The Lord indeed has done well, has done us well. He has brought us well. Somebody lift your voice and bless his name. Thank him for a successful Bethesda. Thank him for a successful journey the Lord has been good give him praise and give him glory father we want to thank you for tonight we give you the praise and the glory and honor thank you for your grace that has kept us till this day in the name of Jesus, amen. You may resume your seat in the presence of the Lord.
vengeance has won my battle for me. God of miracle has won my battle for me. God of vengeance has won my battle for me. God of miracle has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man. I'm a winner man. He has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man. I'm a winner man. He has won my battle for me. God of vengeance. God of vengeance. Has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man. 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 God of vengeance, God of vengeance, has won my battle for me. God of miracle, God of miracle, has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man. 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 Won my battle for me, God of vengeance. I won my battle for me, God of miracle. God of miracle. I won my battle for me. I'm a winner man. 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 I'm a winner. I'm a winner man, I'm a winner man, he has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, I'm a winner man, I'm a winner man. He entered hell, he took the key, he gave me, oh, I'm free indeed. He entered hell, he took the keys, he gave me, oh, I'm free indeed. He entered hell. He took the keys. He gave me oh, I'm free indeed. He entered hell. He took the keys. He gave me home. He entered hell. He took the keys. He gave me home. He entered hell. He took the keys. He gave me home. He entered hell. He entered hell. He took the keys. I'm a winner man, he has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, I'm a winner man, I'm a winner man. I'm a winner man, I'm a winner man, I'm a winner man. I'm a winner man, I'm a winner man, I'm a winner man. He answered hell, he took the key. 
see what the Lord has done Can you see what the Lord has done See what the Lord has done See what the Lord has done What we waited for Has come to pass What we waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. We waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. What we waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard. I have seen what the Lord has done. The miracle I've been waiting for, He has brought it to pass. See what the Lord has done. My ears have heard I have seen what the Lord has done The miracle I've been waiting for He has brought it to pass See what the Lord has done See what the Lord has done Can I describe a God that indescribable? How can I explain a love that's unexplainable? I'm at loss for words Ooh, My heart sings Ooh, 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 My heart sings 
How can I describe a God that is indescribable? How can I explain? How can I explain a love that's unexplainable? So we 
I want you to lift up your hand and I need us to pray. I told us on, um, on Sunday, I said anybody who is coming to church, try and bring a point of contact with your birth certificate. Either the certificate itself or something that has your ID on it or an order. 
you know sometimes it just enforces the prayer you are praying I know you can pray without all that but when you carry it it just reminds you that you have added more seriousness you have added something more aggressive to the prayer you are going to pray and I want you to hold that thing in your hand you were born for a purpose you were born for an assignment you were not born to just die like that so we pray tonight in the name of Jesus that any assignment of hell to cut you up before your time and people let's stop taking the prayers we pray for granted last week somebody said you know somebody got involved in an accident and she said that after the service on one of the days she just felt she should come and pray about her life and her safety she went and did that prayer after two days God saved her so these things are not things you should take for granted and I want you to pray tonight as if you are praying for your life not the life of a cockroach pray like you are praying for your life that you will live long you will live long you will live long yesterday I was making a study of Martin Luther and I realized that Martin Luther he died at just the age of 62 years just 62 Martin Luther of all people he was gone I studied the circumstances I looked at the background what happened to the man and so on and so forth and the speculations and everything and I'm like you know what let's stop taking things for granted I want somebody to pray online in person God can save you God can deliver you I need somebody to lift up your voice and whilst we are praying I want somebody to invite another person to join us online and those of you that are on Facebook and other things just share the link with somebody and invite someone to join us shall we pray everybody just just pray and the song I want us to pray is um, the song our God of vengeance okay somebody pray lift up your voice and pray only the instrumentation only the instrumentation I will let you pray and everybody sit down and pray because we are tired we are tired after this long convention so somebody pray somebody pray I told you pray as if it's your life we are talking about some of us are praying as if it's a very simple thing we are talking about but this is your life we are talking about your family depends on this life your family depends on this life your your everything depends on this life so pray you depend on this life God's kingdom depends on this life the ministry depends on this life so somebody pray if you are cut off everything you are doing stops somebody pray stage everybody say i plead the blood of jesus over my life i'm an overcomer i plead the blood of jesus over my life plead the blood of jesus over your life i plead the blood of the atonement over my life makabasiana shadapakaroros i plead the blood
blood over my life. I overcome by the blood and by the word of my testimony. In the name of Jesus. Somebody pray. He took the keys, he gave me oh I'm free in the entered hell. He took the keys, he gave me oh I'm free in the entered hell. He took the keys, gave me oh I'm free in the pray. listen to me look at me whilst we are praying i want you to pray that god should deliver you from three kinds of people god deliver me from three kinds of people number one is wicked people so pray for, say heavenly father deliver me from wicked people take my life out of the hands of wicked people now, I know that that one, you understand it. Secondly, Father, deliver my life from the hands of careless people. Some people are just careless. They are cooking food, they are careless. They are driving, they are careless. They are on the road everywhere. Just on my way to church, I had to swerve a motorbike. Because this guy is riding a motor. No light behind him. There's no way you can see him in the midst of all this lack of street light. No way you can see him. He's riding a motor. No, no, no light at the back. And he's riding on the speed lane instead of the other one. You are not likely to be looking for a motorbike on that road. This is a careless person. So in the attempt to dodge him, if you are not careful, by the time you realize, you have rather thrown your life away. So you know what? You are praying a prayer. Father, deliver my life from careless people that when I'm walking uh, you can imagine if you have a watchman security man who is asleep that's a careless man you put your life in in, in his hands so father deliver me from careless people the other day I was telling you I was driving out of the church and anytime I'm driving I have to stop and make sure that goats are not eating our grass because the security man doesn't care he, the man goats have eaten everything in his house, including the roofing sheet. It's not here he's coming to sit now looking for goats eating. So Basanka Maybe that's his mind. So Father, deliver me from wicked people. Deliver my life from careless people. And then deliver me from indifferent people. There are the people too, they are not wicked, they are not careless but they are indifferent. So like the man who was wounded, the priest and the Levite, they were indifferent. They can see you, but they will not help you. So somebody pray, Father, deliver me, deliver my life from wicked people, indifferent people, deliver me from careless people. Somebody pray. deliver my life I can't hear you please it's your life we are talking about deliver me from a carelessness a careless doctor a wicked pastor wicked fetish priest wicked diviner wicked enchanter deliver my life from any wicked person somebody lift up maybe it's your ID card maybe it's your phone something that contains your date of birth and pray I 
I'm leading the prayer, but I'm holding my ID. Don't take it for granted. Take it. It's a point of contact with your life. Kadosi Mihata. Those of you that are on the Facebook everywhere, invite somebody to join us. Share the link. Don't, don't, don't be greedy. Don't keep this meeting to yourself. Share the link. Be involved. Engage. And somebody pray, Lord, deliver me from wicked people. Deliver my life from the hands of the wicked people. A witch, wizard, diviner. Somebody who wants to kill. Somebody who is mentioning my name in shrines. And wants to destroy me. Deliver me. Deliver me from carelessness. My own carelessness concerning my life. Deliver me. Somebody pray. I can't hear your voice. Can somebody pray louder than the instrument? Sometimes the reason the pastor say clap your hands and pray is because we are not praying loudly enough. There is a time you whisper a prayer. There is a time you shout the prayer. So Isaac, first join us to pray this one. Enquire if you have a microphone. Pray. say this after me heavenly father let my life be precious in your sight i pray in the name of jesus that you will hide my life in the hollow of your hand preserve me in the name of jesus amen clap your hands and praise jesus all right today we are starting the the teachings on the month of laughter Everybody say laughter. Come on, say it again, laughter. laughter. Say it again, laughter. laughter. Okay. And for anything you study or you want to know, which God is telling you to do, one of the ways you can do it is to find out how God himself does it. So we want to start these studies by looking at the way God laughs. Then we can understand how we should laugh. Is that okay? I thought you would clap at least. You see, I don't know about you, but I don't know about you, but since I became a Christian, no pastor has preached to me about God laughing before. Um, I've seen um, singers who say, and he that sits in the heavens shall laugh. But um, whether we really understand what we are saying or not, I don't know. But maybe for many of you, this is the first full sermon 
you are going to hear on God laughing. How many of you are like that? This is the first full sermon. You are going to hear on God laughing. And I'm going to teach on God's laughter. The laughter of God. I'm going to teach it today. And I'll teach it again at the set as assembly on Sunday. And I'll teach it again at the rain assembly. And I'll teach it at the fire assembly. And I'll teach it at KI. Can you imagine God laughing all this while? God is God laughing. God laughing. And when you look at the instances under which God laughs, those inst instances are very, very interesting. Now, talking about the laughter of God, I'm aware, may lead us into theo theological debate. But this is not the t purpose of my teaching. You know, there are people that turn everything in this world into a theological debate. And I'm sure talking about God laughing can lead to a whole theological debate. But this teaching is just to emphasize the fact that God delights in the laughter of his children. So when you hear that God laughed, the main aim of this is that God wants his children to laugh. It's not like God gains anything by laughing. But when the Bible says that God laughs, God laughs, he's just to tell you he delights in your pleasure and he delights in your laughing. Now, and when they say somebody laughed, it means that the person's emotions have changed. So the person can get angry. The person can be grieved. And another moment, the person can laugh. So if they say God laughed, then they are, they are, they are trying to suggest that God is prone to the emotional expressions of men. Now, there is a doctrine in theology. They call it the doctrine of impassibility. Everybody say impassibility. Come on, say it again. We are in a systematic theology class. Okay? So, everybody say impassibility. So, there is a doctrine of the impassibility of God. I beg your pardon, impassibility, not passability, impassibility of God. And I will explain the impassibility of God to you. Now, the impassibility of God is a doctrine which says that God does not only not feel, but God cannot feel. So the doctrine of impassibility says that God cannot feel. He can't feel sad. He cannot feel happy. He cannot... Um, feel angry he cannot laugh he cannot smile now so that is the doctrine of the impossibility of god the impossibility means kept incapable of feeling incapable of feeling pain and exempt from suffering so for example i cannot imagine that god is in pain i cannot also imagine that god can suffer that you can slap god and say that we promise so the people say impossible. That means incapable of feeling pain. He's exempt from suffering. And it comes from the word in the mid 14th century. From the old French. Impossible. Or directly from the church. Latin impossibilis. Which means incapable of passion. So it is made of the opposite, not possible, of feeling a passion. So it's not possible of feeling, or it's not possible for God to suffer. It means emotionless. That's what we are trying to say about God. So the doctrine of impassibility says that God cannot feel anything. And if God cannot feel anything, then he can laugh, he cannot smile. So that is one side of the divide. That is what other, that is what um, one group of people believe. Now the other people who believe that God can smile, their theological position is different from this one. They talk about an anthropopathic God. Everybody say anthropopathic. Come on, say it again. Your tongue will not break. Say anthropopathic. Okay. So, anthropopathic. Anthropopathic, what they are trying to say is that 
is a language when they say something when they say anthropopathy they are trying to attribute human emotions or expressions to god so the human being can be grieved the human being can be angry the human being can be happy the human being can be smile can smile i beg your pardon and they take those same attributes or expressions of human beings and then they put them on god so it is anthropopathic so they will tell you that god has got feelings he is a being so so they take the feelings of a being and then they put it on god now how do we marry these two the anthropopathic god or the impossible god i believe you have to find a line somewhere because you will see clearly in the scriptures that god can demonstrate anger you will see clearly he demonstrates grief so the bible said and he grieved the lord at one point he said and it repented god that he made man <laughs> i remember the, the day i was talking about um Look, I got so frustrated about church that uh, me, I was even thinking, I won't pastor again. I just want to do my work as an evangelist, just preach around, come and sit in this church. Sometimes go to the Tongo church, go to the Zuharungu church, go anywhere. Fountain Gate preach once in a while. Come and preach because there's a process. Leading you is very difficult too. After that, some people got panicked. They said, hey, this thing, we have to keep it like that too. We, we don't have to be saying it like that. But even God, Yes, I is fed up with the Israelites. D didn't God say it? The Bible said at a certain point, it repented God that he created man. And I'm not the first person to be doing something and when you are leading people and they are too difficult. You, you, you want to get, because for how long can I do what I'm doing? Last month, I preached every meeting in the church. All the four meetings on Sunday, every teaching on Tuesday. Yesterday, when I did the duty roster, I'm preaching every meeting. There is not a single preacher any of the day. I'm doing all. Now, so it means I'm doing it on in the month of March before you come to church. Then I do it in the month of April. Otherwise, you won't come to church. Then one day when I'm dead and gone, will you come to church? So it's better I tell you now so that you understand what I'm saying. And I want to ask you. And you soon to me, bones him. You know, so I tried to check with my wife whether that statement is okay. And mommy confirmed it's all right. She confirmed it's all right because she herself, Otimus, I'm a bread. Because an opposite say, Anaju, me, Baha. She had to wake me up. She woke me up from sleep. Dad, get up. It's time. Then I got up and carried this body, which was preaching last week. And that's because if I deliver this Tuesday to the pastors, you won't come. At a certain point, they even said, I've left the Tuesday meetings to the children, the young, young pastors, the couples pastors who are men. They call them children. Pastor Chris Isaka has got children. They call him children. Um, Pastor John Walker with his beard. They call him children. Who again do they call children? Jackson. And then who again? Pastor Aaron. These are not children. These are men. But the time must come when desert pastors were so matured that even if they put a child destiny school child here on Tuesday to preach, all of us will be here. All of us will be here because we are not coming here because of a man. We are not coming here because of a woman. We are coming here because of God. You understand what I'm talking about? So, um, the Bible reveals that God repents, he feels grief, he gets angry. Now, so it is logical to conclude that God can rejoice and God can laugh. But the balance is that he doesn't need to rejoice, he doesn't need to laugh, he doesn't need to feel pain, he doesn't need to be grieved, but it is for our sake. So for me in particular, it encourages me when I realize that even God himself was regretting for creating the, the, the people of Israel and calling them into the wilderness. So that when I'm also regretting for pastoring you, I will not feel bad. And I can tell you I can feel good because God himself was frustrated. So, when you also read that Jesus comes, came in the flesh, and then 
was sorrowful. My God, why has thou forsaken me? And then Jesus wept. When you are crying and you remember Jesus wept, then you too, you increase your acceleration in the crying. <laughs> when they say, well, I say, I may be Jesus, I may be Jesus. Even Jesus. Bible can bow to Jesus and I kill him. Doesn't the Bible say that Jesus, even Jesus wept? So you know, it encourages you to the point that even when you are crying, you don't feel miserable and think you are going to commit suicide and say you are going to commit suicide. So God is anthropopathic. That means he can assume the feelings of, um, of a human being and he does that just to encourage us okay and to also make us understand that he and to also make us understand his ways but you see i'm also aware of the people that hold the doctrine of the impossibility and i'm giving you this so that you know that although i'm talking about the anthropopathic god i understand that there is the other side which is the impossibility of god theory okay but um, I wouldn't go and fight somebody because the person is saying impossible God and then I will not also go and start um, championing with somebody because the person holds a view of the anthropopathic or the anthropopathy of God. But he does all these things for our sake. For example, for example, if somebody sees the foolishness of God, I'm sure you'll get angry. How can somebody be talking about foolishness and attribute it to God? I remember the first time I heard an American preach a sermon, the foolishness of God. I said, this man has blasphemed. How can you attribute foolishness to God? But you have to read the context and understand exactly what God is saying when he talks about the foolishness of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24 to 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24 to 30. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Now you see, when you read all these things about Greek or Jew, you don't understand it. But you see, things like, when you talk about the anthropopathy of God, that, like God feeling emotion, the Jews will tell you, yes, he can feel emotion. The Greek will tell you otherwise. So the way the Greeks looked at God or deity was entirely different from the way the, the, the Jews will look at it. That is why Paul will tell you that there's neither Greek nor Jew because of that di divergent ways in which they look at things. Now, verse number 25 says, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. So the Bible talks about the foolishness of God. And people, many of us who are even Christians, we don't understand the foolishness of God. You know, people, your foolishness is not your foolishness. Your foolishness is the foolishness of God. No, do, do you realize that these days, anything you are doing as a Christian, people say you are a fool. When you come to church, they say you are a fool. When you become holy, they say you are a fool. You become pure, they say you are a fool. You take your money and give to church, which you believe in, they say you are a fool. But when they use their money to buy beer, a petition, to go and watch a game, that one is wisdom. But whatever you do, they call it foolishness. So, they attribute foolishness to you in every way. Then, they look at themselves and they are very wise because they are educated, they are learned, they know so many things. You haven't gone to school like them. Today, mommy and, mommy and I had a um, meeting with our children, three of our children, Faustina Mba, Sela, Nicola. The three of them were sitting in one chair. Me and mommy were sitting in single chairs. And I told them, I said, look at the three. The three sitting in the same chair. They all had master's degree. Me and mommy have our bachelor's. Our only master's degree is that we are married. So we are not bachelor and spinster. We are married. So my master's degree is my wife. And her master's degree is her husband. But the rest of them sitting, 
at master's degree, okay? And, and, and these days, the young people are very educated. They, they are learned, and, and that is where they get wisdom. But I wish the younger generation who have this master's degree will get master's degree in etiquette, culture, common sense, wisdom, culture. How they understand the basic principles of respect, honor, if our generation, if your generation can learn something about basic honor, basic honor, basic honor. The Bible said, honor thy father and thy mother. This is the first commandment to the promise. So that it will be well with you and that you will live long on earth. If we can learn simple things like this. But the Bible is here talking about the foolishness of God and how many times having people call us foolish? How many times having people call us crazy? How, how many times having people call us mad people? And truly speaking, there is a lot of foolishness in us. There's a lot of foolishness. One of the acts of foolishness, all of us demonstrated it last week, gross act of foolishness. Giviat ha Elohim. Act of foolishness. This thing in the village. What are you going to get from this? I was talking to my friend Dr. Menzo Tabel. He said to, yesterday, or is it today? I think it was today. Yesterday. He said, is what that thing you did, it just beats my imagination because I'm just wondering what is he going to get from that? The answer is zero. I'm not thinking about getting anything. The important thing is that we've done it. And Pastor Mike, I got up yesterday and I told Raymond. I said, Raymond, I want you immediately. You will go to the same site. The land we have outside the wall, I want you to build five lo local houses. Unit. Five. The local houses the way they used to be. Use the soil from the ground to build it. Use the tunnel or whatever. Do it impenetrable to rain. Do the designs on it and roof it with grass. The way the touch roof used to be. Then one of them, I want you to make the hole like the way our ancestors used to have the hole and then they go down the hole and go into the room. Do it exactly like that. And the windows, I would like you to do the round, round windows that used to be there. So that one day, because one day this Damalton dong is going to change so much that when you are describing a heart, nobody can understand what you are saying. Unless you Google and show them a picture, they will not understand. But I want a situation where the whole thing will be done and then people can go there. So one of them will just be um, a, a sample to show people. But the other ones, four, will be done in such a way that people can sleep in them. The only thing is that we won't put an air condition in it because those rooms, there was no, <laughs> there was no air condition. Um, maybe we'll put a small fan in it or something or whatever. But they are going to do something like that. Of course, what they will do will be more glorious than what you are showing me. <laughs> I'm sure somebody said, are we now going backwards or what? But, but, but you know, ladies and gentlemen, for you to be thinking all this about a village, it's foolishness. And that is why the unbelievers get confused. They must have a motive behind what they are doing. People, me and mommy are the ones doing it. There's no motive. The only motive is foolishness. Foolishness. <laughs> foolishness. We, 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 we just want to be stupid for the people to benefit. How many of you know that if we had built this thing and it was not a community center but we had said it's a church people insult us. Hey! The people don't have food to eat. And go and see the kind of church they are built in a village. Where are the people in the church going with a nice place like this? When the people around them are hungry. But you see, because we call it community center, where they can meet. And they are in your But your friend has son there. You are there, you And you are there, you And can sem. You are there, sem. See, I get with some guy church. And can just say, Johnny. And I want to ask you. And I want to ask you. And I want to ask Pastor Mike, the people have cheated us all through the years. Anything we do for ourselves is evil. When we do it for unbelievers, 
and for the community, they clap for us. So you see this church, we can use the offering and take care of other people's children. Help foundation, they will clap for us. But if you go and take a penny to look after my child or my child or Pastor Solo's child, oh, omo dia so risk e no omo di hwa omo ma enti yen dia ye ma no omo ye nwe o se mo sisi e pa eni enti na onyame on hira mo because mo akoma no enya akoma papa enya akoma papa mo mpe ye ye you 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 see you labor you labor but they don't wish you well the the, the unbelievers don't wish you well the people sitting in the church don't wish you well am i teaching well I'm teach you well. Now, people. So the Bible talks about the foolishness of God. And the foolishness of God has to do with some people have committed their sin. They, they've sinned against God. And then, then they've sinned against God. And they, 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 after sinning against God, then God now takes all their sin and puts it on one person. Jesus Christ, who committed no sin. And he had to die for the sins of the world. That is what the Bible calls the foolishness of God. That's what the Bible calls the foolishness of God. And he said that this foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than the church. So we walk about, we look so weak, we look so frail. The church is a soft target. Everybody attacks us. What people do against the church, they dare not do it against other religions. No, 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 because they know that other religions will come against you if you try it. But the church, we are soft target. No, no, no. I'm telling you, church is the place where unbelievers can come from outside here. Come and catch Pastor Mike or me and start beating us up. And the whole church will be looking at them. We'll be looking at them and saying, please, in the name of God, don't beat him. In the name of God, don't beat him up. But if you want, you go to other places and go and catch their leader. Hmm? And say you are beating him up and see what you are do, what they will do to you. Yesterday I had a revelation and it was a very dangerous revelation. Dangerous. I said, this can happen in holy church. Huh? I had a revelation, eh? Pastor Mike, and there was this dog. It was bigger than a lion. I'm standing with some people, and I'll, and I'll not describe where the people are coming from. But suffice it to say, they are white people. They are not black like us. I described the details of the revelation to mommy. These people had a lion, a dog, which was as big as a lion. And we are standing outside together with church members. I'm standing with some of the church members. I can recognize some of you who were there. And they said they are going to kill the dog. They are going to kill the lion. The lion, it was a dog. But it was as big as a lion. So they said they are going to kill the dog and come. And they said, I alone should follow them and see what they are going to do. So I followed them into the place. And when I got into the place, man of God, they put the dog down. And they cut the head. And they said now, they want to chant and do invocations on the head of the dog. And they started, their leader, these are not black people. No. I don't want to go into the detail of the thing. I understand revelation and I've under explained it to mommy. They were speaking incantations on the head of the dog. And when they were speaking, the head of the dog started blinking. So the, the, the dog is dead, but the head, the eyes are moving. And they were looking in my direction. And then they were saying that after they finish attacking this lion with the dog head, they are coming after me. So I found a way to get out of the room. And when I got out, these people were chasing me. And I went and I stayed somewhere. But I realized that when I also got somewhere, some people joined me. And when they joined me, you couldn't recognize me because now I look like, like one of those white people. And then what we're doing is we're building these story buildings, building these big, big buildings. And I'm in the midst of them and we're building. And the people are roaming around the whole place and they are saying they are looking for me, but they couldn't find me because God had hidden me. But I'm telling you, Pastor Mike, my understanding is that what we are doing is provoking the devil's serious. My understanding also is nothing can stop us because our lives are hid with God in Christ. 
and that is why I tell you the church all the time that when we are doing some of these things Munjai and Kwasi Asem Munjai and Kwasi Asem because you know, the generation in which we are is a very decisive generation can I tell you something by the word of God this our generation is the one that will save the upper east region this one this generation no it will not go beyond our generation it is our generation and our children our generation will lay the foundation our children will pick it up and they will send it to another level if you believe it, scream like your voice is yours and praise God <laughs> and listen I tell you all the time I'm a fighter to the core no I fight everything in me is the instinct of a fighter I tell you there's no one joke like this in me no 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 everything is serious be a war sometimes I listen to myself preaching and I'm like ah, can't even tone down a little about the things he says because when I even tell you good morning it's offensive when I say even I love you it sounds fake because even the I love you is militant have you seen the way I call my wife, my wife Pearl it sounds like we are fighting Pearl if a romantic man was saying Pearl it would be nice power Pearl, Pearl, where are you? Pearl, how are you doing? Oh, Pearl, 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 how are you doing this morning? But in my case, it's not like that, too. Pearl! One day I was chatting with mommy in the night. A security man came and stood at the window and said, Masa, love here. Yes, I remember, are you fighting? I said, and Sam, go away. We are conversing. We are conversing. Why do you even think I'm thinking I'm, I'm fighting, fighting with my wife? That, that is why the other day my son, Ayete, was saying, I use the word inefficiency. I said, mm -hmm. Daniel, those are not my words. My words normally are very rough. They are not very nice. But you see, so God has chosen the foolish things of the world and, and the weak things of the world to confound the, 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 the wise. And he said that the weakness of God is stronger than men. We, we are weak. People attack us. Like what I was just showing you. They attack us. They chase us. They make our lives miserable. And the reason they attack us more is that when they attack us, we attack one another. Okay? So Paul is talking about all these things. And that's because in those days, they killed them at will. They took them to the prison. They killed them. They, they did all kinds of things to them. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. The base things of the world, the things which are despised, has God chosen, yea, the things which are not, to bring to naught the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. The other day, I brought out when we were launching Giviat Elohim. Ha Elohim. Giviat Ha Elohim. Go and tell Professor, we are learning. You know, I brought my brothers and sisters out. Okay. I wish they could get the picture of my brothers and sisters. Because you know, there are things sometimes I say, you guys don't understand me well. I brought out my brothers and sisters and then I thanked them. And I told you that when you want, if you want to know me, don't look at me. Hmm? If you look at this man, you make a mistake. You look at my shirt. You look at my trousers. You look at my watch. You listen to the English I'm speaking. You will make a mistake because you are looking at this. If you want to know me, look at Vero, look at Alex, look at Martha, look at Cecilia Avopa, look at Ima, look at Madame Kurboni, the original. The one um, second from the left, 
That's the strongest among us. If this woman opens her mouth, if there's a mountain you must climb, you will climb it. No, you will climb it and refuse to get down. You see her standing like that. No, no, no. This one opens her mouth. Mm. So I don't engage her in too many conversations because she can open the mouth and she's the one we did the house for in the, in the village there. You know, um, that house we've been seeing. She's, she's the proud owner of the house. And then this is my other sister Lizzie. Now, so I was telling you that if you want to know me, don't look at this one. You make a mistake. This one who goes to America, Germany, Canada, other places. Don't look at this one. Look at these people. And then your understanding will be that God called this man out of this simple family. God called this man out of this simple family. So when I look at myself, I don't see this. I see them. And I see that I was just like all of them. Then God just pulled me out so that no flesh will glory in his presence. So I'm not walking about thinking I'm better than other people. I'm something special. No. All of you sitting in front here. You look nicer than all my brothers and sisters apart from Alex. Alex is like the rest of you. But you look nicer than all the rest of them. And of course, Martha, um, what is, Verotu is looking nice with a pretentious hair, raised like that. Hey, Martha to the hair is there. <laughs> but people, this is me. And so you can imagine that God is trying to do, okay, now we can go off. You can imagine that God is trying to do something in Damalton Dong and God goes to this village. And then out of the village, he goes to just pick somebody from it. And at the time, God called me, nothing special. When I was growing up as a child, I used to go to the baller, pick up aluminum things, go and pound them, sell to, in order to get food. I wish in all those days we had pictures. But we didn't. In fact, we didn't take pictures because we didn't think we were going anywhere. Where, <laughs> where are you going? You are taking pictures. <laughs> you know. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just nothing. I, I, I'm just nothing. Some, 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 somebody was just wasting away and God just, you know, came and picked me up like that so that no flesh will glory in his presence. And then when God calls you like that, he puts an anointing on you and all of us God picked us out of nowhere. He called all of us out of nowhere. And when he called us, he joined us to himself and put an anointing on us. I'm telling you about my story, but you too, you know your story. That you were born and then God took you out of nowhere. Put his hand on you. And place the seal of the Holy Ghost on you. You yourself can tell. You are different from your other family members. You can clap. I celebrate you for looking so beautiful. Looking so glorious. Looking so great. You have become the envy of the nations. The envy of your family. The envy of your town. And in your compound house. They are looking at you and say, Who does she, does she think she is? When they get up every day and they dress, I know the way they insult you. When you get up and you dress and you are going to dart your fountain gate chapel, dart your desert passes, you are going to dart your pastor. You people think you are better than everybody. How many of you have heard it before? Or you've never heard it? You people think you are better than everybody. You think you are the only church in town. You think you are the dad and you are the dad. The truth is that, ladies and gentlemen, you are not the only church, but you shine like a light. You are like a light in the midst of darkness. And I came to tell you that this house is a good house. This house is a good house. It's a blessed house. Don't regret for being part of a great house. Don't regret for being part of a house where we appreciate the wisdom of God and the fact that God calls us and he calls us out of darkness into his marvelous life. So you know people, God calls you and when he calls you some people would decide to fight you including kings they would decide to fight you 
And when they decide to fight you, God will laugh at them from heaven. So I want to tonight address the issue of God laughing at the confederacy of hidden powers. God laughing at the confederate hidden powers. Powers of darkness that decide to come against you. So you know, when I meditated on this scripture in Psalm number 2, the verse 1 to 5. They call Psalm 2 the Messianic Psalm. And that is because the whole thing talks about the Messiah, the anointed one. Yesterday, I meditated on this again and again and again. And when I slept and I dreamt and I saw those people trying to attack me and they were pursuing me and things like that, because I understood this scripture from the meditation. When I got up, I just said, the devil is a liar. I rebuked Satan and continued with my day. And so today when I was waiting, holding an administrative meeting, I told them, can you take hold of the administration and let me take care of the things I'm taking care of? Because you know what? When I finish that kind of dream and that revelation, it's not the time for me to get up and go and do a meeting and, and, and I'm talking about an accountant and a manager in an office. It, it's too below me. And I told mommy today, I said, Pearl, I will never talk about this matter again. The next time, it will be somebody sacked. Either the boss or the messenger. One of them has to go. Because you know what? When you distract me with things like this, you make me lose concentration and the enemy can hit us. And I'm, I'm too serious for jokes like this. So, the psalmist says, why do the hidden rage? Why are the hidden raging? Why are these kings of the Gentiles raging and they are angry and they are attacking? The people imagine a vain thing. As I speak to you now, that is why I told you to bring your birth certificate. People are imagining vain things about you. The hidden are raging. Listen to me. People are angry at you for no cause. You've done them nothing, but they are angry. No, you have not gone to take their money. But they are asking, why did you get money to, where did you get money to buy that car? You have not taken their money, but they are asking you, where did you get money to buy your house? You have been promoted and you are occupying an office. And they are saying, why is somebody not in that office by you? You have been ordained as a pastor. The forces of darkness in your family. They are saying, now that this man has become a pastor, he's coming to disturb all the occultic base of the family. So, why do the hidden rage? Why do the people imagine a vain thing? I came to announce to any principality and power that is imagining a vain thing against you. That is raging against you. That God is going to give you the victory against them. He said, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers, they take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Stop here. They take counsel against Jehovah and they take counsel against the anointed of Jehovah. And the anointed of Jehovah here is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the anointed son of God. But by extension, you are the anointed of Jehovah. You are the anointed of Jehovah on the land. You are the anointed of Jehovah in your family. You are the anointed of Jehovah in your place of work. You are the anointed of Jehovah in the community in which you live. You are the anointed of Jehovah in your compound house where you stay. But the kings of the earth, the landlord and the landlord of the other house, the landlord and some people in that house, in that community, in your village, in your town, they have risen up against you. They have set themselves up and the rulers and they are taking counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed say let us break their bands asunder and cast their cords from us stay here listen God has brought you into the place of the anointed to bind up their senators with chains God has anointed you and said what you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And what you lose on earth is losing heaven. God has anointed you and God is saying with the gospel you are going to bind them up 
break them free from idol worship usher them into the kingdom of god god is saying you are going to usher them from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the glorious light of the gospel of jesus and because of the gospel of light you 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 preach they don't like you they hate you and they are saying we will break their bands asunder what are the bands they will break asunder the bands are the rulership of the lord jesus the authority the the, the the law of god the law of god by which he rules the world the law of god by which he rules the nations they are saying we will break it and when we are praying in the name of jesus they say we will break the power of that name over us when we are praying by the blood of jesus they say we will break the power of that blood over our life when we decree authority and we say we are kings and we are princes on earth and we walk about and he has given us the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us and when he gave us the authority and said what we bind on earth uh, is bound in heaven and what we lose on earth is losing heaven then the witches and wizards principalities and powers occultists magicians diverse religions and diverse idolaters they said no we will break their bands asunder we will cast away their cause from us they are saying they will never submit to the gospel they said they will never be born again some have vowed even their dead body will never enter your church they say see that church my dead body will never enter oh some said we will not allow these people to lead us to christ there are people that have vowed they will not be born again they will never bow to the name of jesus but i heard the word say that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of things on the earth and of things under the earth and of things in heaven and that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father but the unbelievers have come together and they are kings and they are presidents and they are prime ministers and they are MPs and they are regional ministers and they are chiefs and they are fetish priests and they are saying let us break their bands asunder and let us cast away their cause from us He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord. Did. I came to announce to you the laughter of God. God sitting in heaven will laugh at your enemies. The people who said they will not surrender to the gospel of Jesus, He will laugh at them from heaven. If you can shout, God is laughing at them. Go back to verse 4. Verse 4. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. You see the way in the days of Elijah. This kind of laughter from heaven, we don't know whether it is the jovial laughter, laughing out loud, but the word laughter in this verse actually means to mock or to tease or to hold somebody in derision to, to, to scorn to scorn to mock, to tease that means God will sit in heaven maybe he's not laughing out loud like ha 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 but maybe God sits there and says <clears throat> there Maybe the Lord shall sit from heaven and say, Be gone. Be gone. And it reminds me about Elijah on Mount Carmel. When the prophets of Baal were jumping all over the place, and Elijah is standing there and teasing them. Probably your God is pursuing an enemy. Maybe your God has gone to the toilet and he's keeping long. That is one of the things he told them. He said, maybe your God is running diarrhea and he has gone to discharge the diarrhea and he's keeping long in the toilets. Elijah, Elijah is mocking them and they are cutting themselves up with knives and so on and so forth. But the Bible said, 
your God in heaven. He will laugh at your enemies. Oh, they can slaughter all the animals they want to slaughter. They can push all the blood they want to push. They can do everything that they want to do. But I announce to you that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you will condemn it. Come on, scream like your voice is yours and praise. Any assignment God has given you on earth, you will finish it. And no devil will stop you. Why? He that sits. In the heavens shall laugh. The one on earth is plotting, but the one in the heavens shall laugh. The ones on earth wants to destroy you. They are planning, but God from heaven, he shall laugh. By Sunday, I will start telling you how he laughs at them. But I came here to tell you that one of the fun God has is laughing as his enemies from heaven he sits in heaven looks at them and they are attacking him and attacking his anointed and he laughs at them and this kind of laughter they call it derisive laughter derisive he's the he, he he's just looking at them and he's holding them in derision look at them derisive laughter this laughter is a type of laughter that is intended to ridicule it is intended to mock someone or something it is a form of nonverbal communication that can be used to express contempt disdain or disrespect so god looks at them from heaven and say chia chia de amoye chia na kwa we mu metu ya sopo no mu metu ya sopo no sangro foi mu metu ya sopo he looks at flesh and blood trying to misbehave he said you can you stop what god is doing i came to announce to you the lord jehovah and you are his anointed no power of the devil can stop you i remember when death held jesus captive and they killed him and they put him in the grave he that sat on the throne he laughed he said do you think death can hold this one captive on the third day Magadabasia, Dabasaya, he broke the chains of death and jesus came out of the tomb i announce to you the devil has bound you but you are coming out the devil is oppressing me while you are coming out. You are more than a conqueror. Come and scream like your voice is yours. And praise you. Uh, uh, here. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. He looks at the witches and the wizards and says, so <laughs> where are they going? The market. The market. The market. Baloto by Aya. You sit in heaven and say, Balo Rayena. Baloto by Yena. What are they saying? Shy. I hear God tonight. In the month of laughter. The laughter is starting from Jehovah himself in heaven and he's laughing at your enemies the Lord shall have them in derision verse number five then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure oh I'm telling you people can I bring you this announcement in the month of April anything which is determined to fight against you God is fighting them from the 2nd of April. The Lord will laugh at them. And when the Lord laughs at them, you will have the fun. You will see them do all kinds of stupid and crazy things to themselves. And I'm telling you, between now and um, Sunday, I'm going to show you how the Lord laughs at them. I'm going to show you how the Egyptians pursue the people of Israel into the Red Sea. What did God do? He just started angels, started removing the wheels of their, of their chariots and God sat in heaven and laughed. And then they captured the Ark of the Covenant and they put it in the same room with Dagon the idol and then angels started plucking off the hands and the feet and the legs and Dagon fell 
And then the following day, the people came to raise them up. And God laughed from heaven. He said, look at them. And they raised up their own idol and tried to make him sad. I will show you many things where God is sitting down and making the enemy look stupid, foolish. Am I talking to somebody at all? I came to announce to you, you will not die. You will live to declare the works of God. This month, you shall obtain laughter. Come on, lift up your hands. And I want you to pray. Father, you are seated in heaven. Laugh at my enemies. Laugh at those who want to destroy me. Somebody pray. And listen to me. When we are praying, if you are here and you know you are under a strong attack, just go to the altar and pray. All of us are attacked at different levels. Listen, the one I saw yesterday was awesome. Now, watch this. Let me finish. I didn't finish that one. Pastor Mike, when they cut off the head of the lion dog, they said they were going to now recite incantations on it. And when they were reciting the incantations, the one who was reciting the incantations was looking at me. And the language they were speaking was not Ghanaian language. Wallahi nafadima. And Pastor Mike, I'll give you the details so that you guys can pray. Ladies and gentlemen, desert pastures, what we are dealing with, it's not children matter. No, 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 no. Even the fact that you can produce and provide employment, something is fighting it. I'll give you the details. I'll give you the details. I'll give you the details. You see, eh, when you lead people who are blind, it's very difficult. Action. I see something every day. Unless I don't close my eyes. When I close my eyes, 30 seconds. Whether I'm in church or in the house. Bam! I want you to pray. Some of you are under serious attack. Pray. Can we pray? Speak to God. The Lord will laugh at them. The Lord will laugh at them. Pray. Somebody pray. I can't hear the prayer. It's a car force. Are we praying? Pray, Father, laugh at them from heaven. I can't hear your prayer. Somebody pray. Father, laugh at them from heaven. Laugh at them from heaven. What we bind on earth is bound in heaven. What we lose on earth is loose from heaven. Pray. Pa 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 p
Somebody pray and pray for this church. Pray for the help. Pray for your family. Everybody stand to your feet and I want you to display Psalm 2 on the screen for me. Psalm 2 from verse two, 1 to 12. Psalm 2 from the verse number 1 to 12. And when you go home, I want you to pray over this. The, the Lord is Jehovah. His anointed is Jesus. But I want you to know that Jesus Christ is anointed but you also, by the grace of God, God has anointed you. And this scripture can apply to you. Somebody say, Jehovah has anointed me. Say, I am anointed. Say, I am anointed. Okay, now, we are going to go the whole of Psalm 2. And I told you it's a messianic scripture. It's a scripture about the Messiah. But you can quote it for yourself. It will work. Somebody say, why do the hidden reach? And the people imagine vain things. The kings of the earth, they set themselves. The rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Hey, people, if you know big people, when they sit down, what they say about you and what they plan about you, you will take this prayer serious. One day King David told Saul, he said, Saul, why are you chasing a house fly? Because sometimes you look at yourself and you are small like this. You look at yourself very small. To be honest, to be honest with you, I don't know about you, but anytime I hear that somebody doesn't like me or I have an enemy, me I get surprised. Because the one who is saying is the enemy, I don't even think about the person. And I also don't see myself as anything. I see myself as nothing. I don't even know why the person is concerned about me. Somebody said the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying let us break their bands asunder 
and let us cast away their cause from us in other words somebody is saying that you are anointed by god but you never rule over them you are anointed by god but you never have influence you are anointed by god but they will never let you take a land they will never let you take a house they will never let you exercise your authority let us break their bands asunder let us cast away their cords from them there are people who look at you and they say no not you you cannot be my boss ah, not you you can be my boss somebody else but not you verse 4 shouted he that seated in the heavens shall laugh the lord shall have them in derision then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure say oh lord god heavenly father vex them in your displeasure attack them in your displeasure yet say yet has god set me upon his holy hill of zion i will declare the decree <laughs> Yesterday when I read the scripture, I said the devil is a liar. It is God who has set the Giviat a Elohim on the hill of Zion. Go back there, go back there, go back there. Go back to verse 6. Go back to verse It is God who has set his anointed children on that hill, his holy hill of Zion. Oh, you think that that thing God has set there the devil is happy. The devil wishes that thing was a shrine. Where they are cutting animals, pouring libation, huh? burying human beings and burying cows. Then you've gone to build this thing there and you put there Jesus Christ highway, Jesus Christ highway. You get to the mountain, you say the earth is the loss and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, for he has founded it upon the seas and establishes it upon the flood. Who shall ascend back to the hill of the Lord? He that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Oh, and by the time you do this, you laid the foundation, you finished it, you are functioning in it. You are having fun in it. Because on that day, I went there and I had fun. I drank one bottle of Goya. We are having fun. Then the devil says, let me spoil the party. Before it goes too far. But devil, you are too late. The whole assignment is completed. Magadabasi. Ah, Jesus. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. And that king is you and I. We are kings and priests unto the most high God. And God has set us on that hill. On that hill. No unbelieving. No shrine. No spirit has built anything in that whole place like what God has used you and I to do. It is to the glory of God and no devil. We continue to give glory to God. Never stop. And I pray to God Almighty in the name of Jesus. God has set the church there. God has set the ministry there. Verse number 7. Somebody shouted, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee now i know you this one is familiar to you thou art my beloved son and in thee i am well pleased watch this ask of me shout it ask of me and i shall give you the hidden for your inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession thou shalt break them with a rod of iron you will them in pieces like a potter's vessel be wise
Arise now therefore. All ye kings. Be instructed. Ye judges of the earth. Now, Pastor Mike, this is our problem. With all that God is doing with us, there should be no fool in our territory. No foolishness. So foolishness, no foolishness. Where we are, we are at a strategic inflection point. No foolishness, no carelessness, seriousness. I was saying, you need brain like soldiers that are in a battle. Be wise now, therefore. Lift up your hand and say, Lord Jesus, I am wise, therefore. As a king, I am instructed because I am a judge of the earth. Lift up your hand and say, I will serve the Lord with fear. And I will rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun. Somebody say, I kiss the sun. I kiss Jesus Christ. The son of God. Lest he be angry. One kiss Jesus and the bubefu. And a nyamiankas and the no wonder a woman went and anointed his feet with oil and kissed the feet. That woman was wise. She's the only one who knew what to do. Yes, sir. Judas Iscariot kissed him and betrayed him with a kiss. Kiss the son. Lest he be angry. And ye perish from the and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Come on, clap your hands. Mm. I I try to preach half of my sermon to be continued on Sunday. But I pray this week, from now up to Sunday, may God laugh at your enemies. Lift up your hand and declare he will laugh at my enemies. God will laugh at my enemies. Jehovah will laugh at my enemies. My enemies they will hear the laughter of God in the name of Jesus. He that sits in the heavens shall laugh at them. Clap your hands. You may be seated. Glory be to God. I want us at this point to receive our offering. Everybody come on, pick up your offering. Pick up your offering. You know what, people? Unbelievers, they do what they want to do with their own money. Don't let them control what you do with your money. Don't let them control it. Don't. Don't ever allow the opinion of unbelievers to determine what you do with your own money. Because you don't control what they do with their money, with their money refuse to let them control what you do with your money. I want somebody who is bold enough, although this is Tuesday. You know, on Tuesday, somehow people believe that because it's Tuesday, they should give a smaller offering. I don't know where that tradition comes from. But I want somebody who is breaking that tradition to take a seed of not less than 100 Ghana cities and put it in the basket. And we are the first to do our offering. The rest can follow later. But I want somebody who is breaking that tradition to take a seed of not less than 100 and put it in a basket. And if you are in, you are following us online, take the seed of not less than 100 and sow it. And I want to, you to call it a breakthrough seed. It's a barrier breaking seed. And anybody responding like this, God is breaking a barrier for you. God is breaking a barrier. Lord God, I give you the glory and the honor. Barriers are broken. Chains are coming down. Yeah. If it's bigger than 100, go ahead and do it. But not less than 100, do it. And you are saying, I'm breaking a barrier. I'm breaking a chain. I'm breaking a barrier. I'm breaking a chain. Jesus, I'm breaking a barrier. Somebody online, follow us and do it. Follow us and do it. You are breaking a barrier. God shall laugh at them. God shall laugh at them. 
I want somebody to pick up your offering. Everybody, lift it up. Lift up your offering. Those of you that are online, everybody, everywhere, lift up your offering in the name of Jesus. And eternal Father, I pray over every offering lifted. And I ask that your name be glorified. Touch our lives, glorify your name. Exalt the horn of our salvation. You are worthy of our praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Wherever you are, I want you to pick up that offering. Find the basket. But the song I want is Emmanuel has done it again. Those of you that are online, give your offering to it. The Lord bless you mightily. Jesus is glorified. He has taken my pain and given me laughter. There's a melody in my heart. A new song in my mouth. I will sing for joy to the well of greatness. Yo, 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 yo. This is a victory song. Jesus is glorified. Hey. He has taken my pain and given me laughter. I put a melody in my heart. A new song in my mouth. I will sing for joy to the well of a great world. Emmanuel, I turn it again. Oh. Emmanuel, I turn it again. Oh. Emmanuel, I turn it again. Oh. I am here to testify. He has done it again. Oh. Emmanuel, I turn it again. Oh. Amen, amen. You may be seated. 
Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Now if you are here tonight and you have your pledge, you have your tithe because you couldn't do your tithe on Sunday, can you rise up and can you bring it to the, can you stand with it first? Let me pray over it before you bring it. Your tithe, we, we thank God for you tithing in this ministry. Um, I say the same things again and again and I don't know whether sometimes people don't get fed up with me but I can tell you Anybody who comes to this church and you tithe here, you are the last person not to be able to explain to anybody why you tithe to this house. The reason you do is that your environment in this church, that kind of environment does not exist in this town. That means people are constantly cleaning. People are constantly replacing things. People are constantly keeping the environment the way it is. And if people want to see your tithe, it's very easy to see it. Very, very easy to see it. Very easy. You'll see that this is the, about one of the few places, apart from hotels, where you go in the dry season and the whole place is green. Because normally it doesn't happen unless it's a, it's a hotel. And even the hotels, they learned that one just recently. But to keep the place as neat as this place is, run a television station 24 hours a day. Run a TV ministry, radio ministry, throughout the month. And I think LRTV, how many years are we now? Are we up to one year? LRTV, are we up to a year? One year and more. No, this two years and over. Because I remember went one year, then I pleaded with the people to stay another one year. So we've gone past two years without break. Without break. And when you go to our satellite providers, they will tell you that we are one of the few churches who have paid that $7,000 plus every month without default. Every month without default. And people... We do it, and I remember several years ago when I stood here and I said, there will be no single adult standing in front of a single house in the Upper East region. I'm like, but God, I'm not an evangelist. I don't do crusading villages. How is that going to happen? When the TV ministry started, I said, oh, now I see. Because now you go everywhere in Boca, everywhere. Whether the person is pagan, the person is Muslim, the person goes to church, the person doesn't go to church other denominations, stores, marketplaces. And the TV is just sitting on LRTV. Children are watching. The other day, I went to the school. The children, they came like a swarm of flies. Swarm of eagles or whatever. I don't know, eagles. Eagles, when they are many, what do they call them? <laughs> they just came like that. Pastor is good, pastor is good, pastor is good. And all of them is because their parents just leave this TV on that. And you know what, people? We are preaching the gospel. And it's all because of your tithe. Because of your giving. And we pray that God will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. And rebuke the devourer for your sake. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Find a basket. And in case anybody made a pledge during the Easter, during the Bethesda, if you made a pledge, can you bring it? Hey, Dominic, it's good to see you. How are you doing? Bless you. Bless him, bless him. Somebody. Mama Oyen, how are you doing? Is that Ben's mother? Or oh, I'm making a mistake? No, that's not the one. Somebody come and give a big, big clap offering to Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Eternal Messiah, we thank you for the offerings of your people. Thank you for the tithe. Your name glorified. Amen. Somebody pick it up. I want those of you that are following me online, thank you very much for doing so well. We want to thank you for following. God bless you. I can see you online in your numbers following this meeting. The Lord bless you, Facebook. The Lord bless you, YouTube. The Lord bless you, Instagram. The Lord bless you, X, Radio TV. Any means by which you are watching and following, 
the Lord bless you. You make this house bigger than we are physically and we don't take your presence for granted. I want everybody who is online, we are about to take communion now. We are about to take communion now because we want to remind ourselves of the blood of Jesus. That blood that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins and the blood that was shed for our protection and our safety. I pray that as you take this communion, may the Lord cover you. May the Lord watch over you. May the Lord preserve you in the name of Jesus. Eternal Father, thank you for this communion. Bring all of them to me. Thank you for this communion. I pray over them in the name of Jesus. I ask that you touch your people's lives. I pray that your name be glorified. Father, rebuke the devourer for our sake in the name of Jesus. Let the mighty hand of God rest upon us. Your holy name is glorified. We declare this month the month of laughter. And we pray in Jesus' name that the enemy will not laugh at us. But God, you will laugh at the enemy from heaven. And your holy name will be glorified forever. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, watch this. We go by instruction. Bring me that scripture. The one that said we should be wise. The one that said we should be wise. Psalm 2. The one that said we should be wise. I've forgotten the exact verse. That particular verse that said we should be wise and instructed. We should be wise and instructed. And anytime I sit here in this chair or I stand in this building, what I look for is instruction. To be wise. To listen to what God is saying. Why is the scripture keeping so long? Psalm 2. Is it Psalm 2? Verse 10. Be wise now therefore. All ye kings. And be instructed. Ye judges of the earth. My assignment, I'm not a king, but when it comes to this house, I'm the senior pastor. I have to be wise. When it comes to judge, I'm a judge in this house. I have to be instructed. I'll be wise and I will listen to him and I will give the instruction. And we have to follow the instruction. So the instruction is that every Tuesday when we come here, from now to the end of the month, this anointing, this communion should come. Listen to me. In the midst of danger, you will be laughing. No, no, no. This, this month, you will laugh. Why, V? That thing God saved us from is because it fell in the month just at the tip before we entered the month of laughter. There's no way we would have been crying in the month of laughter. I declare upon somebody, it's a prophetic declaration. No matter what the devil has planned, in the month of April, you'll be laughing. No, no, no. Listen. Even the most dangerous of things can happen. In the midst of the storm, everyone will be mourning and crying. You'll be laughing. Every Tuesday, we are coming here for the communion. In Jesus' name. Is there one I didn't pray over? Father, touch this. Glorify your name. This is the blood that was shed for us. This is your body that is broken for us. And I pray in the name of Jesus. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. By your stripes, we were healed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Bring me, bring me one. I want all the pastors, come to me and take yours first. All the pastors and the leaders of the ministry, come to me. Take yours first. Come from my right, so that I don't have to be turning when you take it, just keep praying. I pray for your protection. 
I pray for your safety. May you be covered by the blood. May the Lord laugh at them from heaven. May he that sits in heaven laugh at them. May the blood speak for you. And may the sacrificial death of Jesus speak for you. I pray in Jesus' name. No weapon of the enemy formed against you will prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment condemn it. Jesus. Somebody pray. Your life is so precious. In the name of Jesus. Karabu Sadaya. Kaparanda Malosi Bata. In the name of Jesus. Somebody pray. You can take the communion now. All right. I don't have one. Somebody just take it. And whilst you are taking it, pray. Taking communion without prayer is almost like drinking Fanta with bread. But no pray. So pray. The prayer is what makes it communion. They are not getting the bread. If they are not getting the bread, those of you who have not broken your bread yet, I don't know what we'll do. But I have a little bit of my bread left. Somebody take it. Let me put just one in your hand. Don't touch it. All right. Thank you. Madam Jeef. Somebody can come out and give you some of my bread. Don't mind. Don't, don't worry. The, the deacons, they didn't know I would go this way. I still have one piece of bread left. man is done we don't have any more wow the rest of you don't worry just pray with us next next tuesday we'll get it right somebody lift up your hands pray thank god for the power of the blood of jesus That is the blood that brings you redemption, salvation. Eternal Father, your name is glorified forever. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody lift up your hand. Begin to declare that he that sits in the heavens shall judge them. He that sits in the heavens shall judge them. Somebody pray. He that sits in the heavens shall judge them. He that sits in the heavens shall judge them. Every Tuesday we'll do this communion service until we end. And those of you that are online, every Tuesday when you are coming, just bring the, your communion. The Bible said, don't be drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. One of the things that brings joy is wine. We are taking the wine of the communion. He said, wine makes merry. A feast is made for laughter. So when you are doing the month of laughter and you are taking communion, you are doing the right thing. I don't know why the communion is not on Sunday. You know, Sunday I nearly called for the communion, then I stopped. 
I didn't know it would come back on Tuesday. Somebody lift up your hand, talk to God. Somebody say this after me, Heavenly Father. I declare that the month of April is a month of laughter. No devil, no principality, no power shall spoil this month for me. I declare peace be still in Jesus' name. Every storm in my life I commanded to stop and I declare peace. He that sits in the heavens shall laugh at death in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and praise Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Now we are getting ready to get out of here. And people, I've been struggling with something for some days and some weeks now about what we should do with this Tuesday assembly because I noticed that the Tuesday assembly um, attending it is a little challenging as far as the time is concerned so we're wondering whether the proper time to start this meeting is 6 p.m. because I noticed that at the 6 p.m. truth is that nobody is here at the 6 p.m. Prophet Livingston will be here but the rest of us is difficult Prophet Livingston and the pastors They'll be here at 6 p.m. The, the, the rest of us, many of us, it's not possible. Because we, we close work, then we have to go to home, we have to change, then we have to come here. And especially when the meeting was closing at 7.30, that means that by the time you get home and you have even settled down, prepared food, especially if you're a wife, you have to give some food to your husband and to your children and then come. Then if the meeting is closing at 7.30, the meeting has ended. So I've been wondering, should we do 6 to 8? Should we do 6.30 to 8.30? What should we do? Because our church too is not a church that can do a meeting in one hour. Meeting in one hour. Because announcement, you know, any commentary, I bet from what about? Now one hour, it came. And the young is also in one hour. meeting one hour. Gaskia ya ya fi karia ni ba imiti one hour aba hour yu mama temba imiti ke zota kula maganda inga so the minimum will be the two hours now the minimum being the two hours I'm wondering should we start at six or six thirty because it looks like the six doesn't work for many people Pastor Mike will six thirty work? Come again. Okay. Oh, it used to be 6.30. So should we go back? How many of you prefer 6.30 to 6? How many of you prefer 6.30 to 6? Oh, it's not a trick. Oh. Sometimes you think I'm tricking you. It's not a trick. So, well, I, not, not guess here. this one, it will not become sermon on Sunday. It is, it's, it's true, true talk from my heart. How many of you prefer 6.30? Okay, let me ask. How many of you came here at 6.30 today? Lift up your hand. You came here at 6.30, not 6. Okay. So the majority of the people came here at 6.30. Um, so now, the Tuesday meeting, we will do it from 6.30 to 8.30 sharp. You understand? 6.30. So that, that period of the 6 to 6.30, is a Wahala period, though. But I'm not saying that the six thirty means change it to seven, because <laughs> that your thirty minutes by all means you will take it. If it's six thirty, you will appear uh, here at seven. But six thirty sharp, you are here. But the doors of the church will be open at six, and when the doors of the church are, are open at six, if the organist you are here. You just be playing some song, thing, 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 musical. Either that or from the console, they'll just be doing some only instrumentation song. And then people come, they'll be praying. And then the prayer warriors will come and take over at the 6 30. Because normally, sometimes some people get ready to come to the meeting at 7 and they are like, I, even if I go 7, I'll get there by 7 15. And they've even closed already. So 
I don't have to go. So we'll do it from 6.30 to 8.30. Um, if some of the days, by the grace of God, we can close at 8, fine. But most of the time, um, our two hours we shall take. So, um, especially when I'm sitting here. Um, if it's the pastors, they may have mercy on you and it will be 6.30 to 8. We'll close. But if I'm here, 6.30 to 8.30. So that women can go home, you can put some food down and then you can rush and come and by the 8.30 would have closed. Okay? And then on Saturday, I'm going with some people to come pray. Now, the meeting we are going to pray at the Givia. It's not a meeting for people who want husband or wife but they are desperate. I'm talking about any man or woman who is not married. Some of you, I know, you don't have struggled getting husband or wife, but I'm telling you, you're about to marry some bad luck person. And that is what God is trying to prevent. Eh? So all of you, we are meeting there to go and pray. So if you are single, if you are not married yet, but you have a fiancé, you may be having a fiancé who is going to Drain your finances. You see, finances and fiancé. You didn't understand. Maybe you are going to marry a fiancé who will make you financially incapable or a financial cripple. So we are all meeting there to pray. And those of you that are believing God for children or you are believing God for somebody to have children in their marriage. So you are going to intercede for somebody. All of us are going to meet there. Now, Pastor Mike... Um, maybe people have to register or something. I want us to be able to get a bus that will take us there. I want to be able to we want to get a bus that will take us there. I don't want everybody to take your own car and start rushing to that place because if your car leaves you on the road, especially between Zanleruk and that one to Nong, I don't know who can save you on that route. Okay, so I want us to... Um, to register or we will do something where we will get some two buses or something that will pick us from here and then take us there and it's going to be from I think 10 to 1 10 to 1 so by 10 we should be there and then by 1 we should be coming back and if mommy and co can arrange some small thing for us to uh, I don't know how we'll do it I don't know whether you will buy it or you will bring your own food Pastor Mike determined that. Because if because of the food, more people come. <laughs> ah, Jesus himself said the people followed him not because of the word, but because of the word. The food. So, um, let's see how we do. Because from, one to, from 10 to 1, people will be hungry. And then you want to come there. And then if you have family-related issues, family-related Maybe you are married already, but you are having challenges in your marriage. Or maybe not challenging. challenges, but you are over-enjoying the marriage. And you want the enjoyment to reduce. Because your husband is disturbing you with too much love. Every day I love you, every day I love you. Too much love. You want it to come down small. You too, you can come there and then you can come and pray. And then, after this Saturday, um, Management Committee of Giviat. Me, I'm booking for my space already with all the talking I'm talking, I'm booking. So whoever is responsible for the booking, take note. Next, the other Saturday, I'm going there with all the pastors. I don't know whether the pastors, some are going to travel or some won't travel. No, our own may not be Saturday. I said we may go any day in the week or something, but because some of the pastors are very vocational. Come again. Whoa. Ah, Pastor Mike has shut it down. <laughs> eh? And the name of Akasa. Then we'll choose a particular Saturday. But maybe then I'll have to use next week. I have to use some days in the week and do the meeting here. But I really wanted to go to the Giviat with them and then we'll stay there the whole day. And we'll do some two hours break, do some two hours break, and do some two hours and break. But if that is not possible, then I have to use some evenings and do it in the, in the evening here. I just want to have some time with the, some quality time with the pastors and the ministers so that um, we prepare ourselves well before they start taking over from me in the month of May. 
because in the month of May, the pastors will come back from sabbatical. Okay? Right now, I've given them sabbatical leave for them to enjoy their wives and their husbands. But um, by the end of April, um, they will be called back to action. And then by that time, you guys are used to coming to church on Tuesday like this without any break. How many of you promise that if I go off, you will still come like this? Yel Mengre. We will sign a contract too. We will sign a contract. Because you can't say, 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 you can not say you can you can not say you can not you the Lord bless you mightily. Um, this work goes with a lot of frustration. So if once in a while something is heated a little in the church, just go home and sleep, take two tablets of paracetamol and return the following Sunday. That day you may come and meet good luck in the church and there will be no fire anywhere. So um, I love you and always remember your pastor means no harm. I love you but pastoring in this part of the world is very difficult otherwise you would have heard of many many more churches like this in this part of the country but there's something i say every time when people have problems with pastors in ghana they will attack everybody in accra after that they will jump kumasi jump techimai jump kintampo jump tamale Go all the way to Bogatanga to go and look for some innocent catkis who is sitting there, minding his own business and trying to see how he can keep his few congregation. They will chase Accra pastors and look for me wherever I'm hiding. And so maybe one day we just have to transport our church to Burkina Faso. And when we go there, we won't speak English. We we'll speak only Mori. Nobody can follow us. <laughs> Okay, um, Pastor Samuel Ali will lead us to go and speak more there. Nobody can chase us. I love you. I will see you on, I think, um, KIA on, um, on Friday morning, KIA. And remember, at KIA, we are fasting on Friday, and the fasting is from the morning up to about 12 o'clock. But those that can go beyond 12, they go. And um, we'll see you again on Sunday. Sunday, I'll be doing all the services set time, fire assembly, rain assembly, and then KIA. All right, so see you.